Hey, everybody. I want to make sure that you guys can hear me okay. I'm uh, Burke Allen with Allen Media Strategies based in Washington, D.C. And uh, we're really excited to partner with Headline Books on the Zoom into Books program. Richard Battle is our guest today, and he's the author of many books, including one that I thought was very appropriate as we navigate our way through the COVID-19 pandemic and everyone self-isolating and being stuck at home. The book is Conquering Life's Course, and Richard joins us from Austin, Texas today. Hey, Richard, I hope you and your family are safe and healthy. Good afternoon, Burke. Thank you for having us, and thank Zoom and the books for having us as well, and we're doing great. And just glad to be here and look forward to speaking with you and everyone else. If you have any questions or comments for Richard, be sure to uh, type them into our chat room. And uh, Richard, first of all, you have a long career as a business leader in Texas, as a consultant, but there are all kinds of people that do that, that never pick up a pen, put it to paper and write a book. So what was your incentive to write your first book? Well, the incentive in the first book I published was in 1988, which was almost 32 years ago. And I never dreamed of writing one book, much less any other ones. And the genesis for that, uh, and there'll be a picture that comes up that Shaley will share later, was that after I'd had a volunteer leadership position in the Junior Chamber of Commerce, for six years, I taught the incoming local chapter presidents of the biggest cities of Texas a day and a half course on how to lead their chapters. And what I noticed after three or four years was that the people coming in had not received any of the instructions passed down from their predecessors who I taught the year before. So I taught that course for six years, and I finally decided to take that information and put it into a leadership book for volunteers so that people could pass the information along easier and you wouldn't have the ups and downs in organizations because of inconsistent leadership. Has, has being an author and being a writer, has that changed the way that, that you've conducted your business life? Well, it has in a lot of ways in that I look at things differently. I look at books differently than I did when I was just a reader. I look at presentations differently. It's amazing now that I get inspiration and when I'm walking, when I'm in church, when I'm in a meeting, I get inspiration for different ideas uh, at all times, sometimes in the middle of the night. And it's amazing how I can take those ideas and then factor them in to my experiences, as well as uh, history and current events and try to share the synthesis of all that with others in a way that hopefully helps them have more fulfilling lives. If you're just joining us, Richard Battle is our guest today. He joins us from Austin, Texas, the author of six books. The latest is Conquering Life's Course. And uh, if something Richard says resonates with you and you'd like to pick up one of his books, he will be happy to inscribe it for you. Log on to headlinebooks.com and search for Richard Battle. Richard Battle. And uh, I told you one of the first times I talked to you, Richard, um, that I found it fascinating that, that your last name is Battle. And you certainly have had some battles in your life that I think have informed you uh, in your, your latest book, Conquering Life's Course. So uh, tell me about one of those most significant battles that you've had to get through. Well, and first, uh, you're not the only person that's asked me if I changed my last name because of sure. those type experiences, uh, but there were several. I'll, I'll just highlight, and, and first, I got to say, I've been very fortunate and blessed to have had many successes in business, in volunteer and civic efforts, and in, in the books that I've written, uh, but I have had some challenges that have formed a lot of the experiences that I've written about. And the, the first one, I survived a fire that my neighbor less than 30 feet away from me died in. Uh, the real estate crash in the 80s uh, was a three year experience of financial ruinization that I thought would never end. And that's important, I believe, as we're in this situation we're in now. Uh, I, in 10 months, I went through a divorce, two heart stents and a cancer diagnosis. and. Uh, the most devastating loss of all was I lost my only son uh, to a SIDS some years ago. And each one of those has affected me going forward and helped me to write and share different messages so that I can hopefully share with others. 
Conquering Life's course is something that we're all trying to do and navigate through now. And, and there's a photo of, of that book, Common Sense in Chaotic Times. And, and Richard, I want, I want you to know I'm going to come back to some of those challenges, especially losing your son. How heartbreaking is that? But for folks who are watching and listening today, and certainly these are some of the most chaotic times in, in the world's history, um, what, what piece of advice would you give them first and foremost in, in navigating through these uncharted waters? Well, I think this is such a fascinating time in that normally we all go through challenges individually or in small groups. And a lot of times we'll be around people and we will not know what challenges that they're going through. But all of us are going through this one challenge at this time. And so the thing that's fascinating to me, and I believe there'll be two groups come out of this, there'll be one group who will take this time and they'll study and prepare, they'll be positive, They'll think of ways that they can improve themselves. And when this is over, they'll take off like rocket ships. And there's the other group that's hunkered down, negative and fearful. And when this is over with and they're lapped by the first group, they're going to wonder what happened. Uh, because change and a lack of control are the two things that we're dealing with. And most, most of us like to be in control, which we're not on this, how long it's going to last, how bad it will be. Uh, and the, ch the change. And so we're dealing with a change now, and I believe there are changes that we can even imagine as we go forward. If you're just joining us on Zoom Into Books with Headline Books, Richard Battle is our guest today. His new book is Conquering Life's Course, Common Sense in Chaotic Times. And your own life has changed quite a bit. I mean, you're a, a speaker along with, with being an author. You're used to flying all over the country and giving presentations in person and uh, shaking lots of hands and doing book signings in bookstores. That's not happening for you anymore. And, and I wonder if that was tough for you to wrap your own head around. Well, it's a, it's a change that I didn't choose no more than anybody else did. So the question is, what can I do with the time? And so I've adjusted to doing things like this, other interviews, Zoom meetings, but it's also enabled me to spend some time creating future content to share as well. And the, the inspiration that I've received during this period to create content has been unparalleled in my lifetime from the standpoint, I've been amazed at how many ideas that I've been given to work on. And so I've tried to turn it into a positive thing for this point forward. One of your other books um, that you'll see on the screen there is, is Surviving Grief by God's Grace. And I wonder, for you personally, how much uh, your faith has informed the way you've navigated through those serious challenges that you faced before, that, that devastating uh, house fire, your divorce, your serious medical challenges, losing your son. How important has faith been for you? Well, it's extremely important in each one of those because without the faith in a life beyond this earth, without the hope of that, then the challenges that we're facing now and other challenges in life would be much tougher because you don't have as much to hope in. And when I lost my son in 1998, it was devastating, even though I was a person of faith. And I believe that when we have challenges that devastating, that we have two choices. We can either get held where we are asking the question, why me, which looks backwards and is lonely and people get hung up there wondering, what did I do to deserve this? Or we can look forward and say, what now? What am I supposed to learn that I can share with others to help them as well as to help me heal and go forward and turn something negative into something positive. And that was what that book was, was trying to share that. And I had journaled and studied the Bible and different people and read many books. And when I had a fellow church member son commit suicide, uh, I shared my notes with them and they encouraged me to publish them, which is what turned into that book, Surviving Grief by God's Grace. And you certainly had to deal with that in, in a huge way with the loss of your son. Um, 
any any words of wisdom for folks who have lost someone during this COVID-19 crisis? And, and I know every case is different, uh, but as of the, the interview we're doing now, you know, nearly 60,000 Americans have lost their life during COVID-19. So a huge number. It's more folks than we lost in, in the Vietnam War. What would you say to someone who has, has lost someone very unexpectedly because of this horrible pandemic? Well, the first thing is, is I just, my heart goes out to anyone who loses someone during this pandemic. Uh, and one of the things I learned after I'd written this volume was that I don't grieve where my son is. I grieve where he isn't. Where he is, is in a good place. I believe he's in heaven and in an eternal place. Where he isn't is with me. And that's what I grieve is that separation that I cannot do anything about. So for the people who don't have faith, that separation and grieving is that loss because that's all you believe that you have. Our guest, Richard Battle, is the author of six books, including his latest Conquering Life's Course. You can get all of those books at headlinebooks.com and search for Richard Battle. That's headlinebooks.com and search for Richard Battle. Richard, our guest on Zoom into books with Allen Media Strategies. Um, I noticed uh, in your book, Unwelcome Opportunity, and boy, this is an unwelcome opportunity. You got a foreword from Larry Gatlin, the famous country singer. Tell me about that. How did you, how did you rope in a big time country <laughs> superstar to read your book? You got some low friends in high places. Uh, well, uh, he lives not too <laughs> far from where I live. And fortunately, a good friend of mine is a very, very good friend of his. And I was fortunate when I shared the manuscript with my good friend and, and asked him that he was able to get Larry Gatlin to read it and very, write some very complimentary words about the story of that experience. And we're, we're appreciative of that. So I wonder if unwelcome opportunity could be applied to the sort of this world that we're in now, where I know that, that I think it was this coming weekend, you originally were going to be in in uh, my neck of the woods in Virginia, giving a presentation at a university. Instead, you and I are doing a Zoom call right now that probably would never have happened had this not uh, been thrust upon us. So is, is coronavirus and COVID-19, is that an unwelcome opportunity? And if so, what do we do with it? Well, I, absolutely. It's an unwelcome opportunity. And that title was given to me in an inspiration. I, I just was, it was a gift given to me as I was writing that story of those experiences. And most of life's challenges are unwelcome to us. And the question is, do we turn that into an opportunity or drown in our sorrows at, at that time? And to me, this is the exact same situation. One of the chapters in Conquering Life's Course is I talk about change is like an ocean wave. And how we respond to that change is very important. We can ride the wave on a, like on a surfboard on the top, or we can let the wave rush over us and drown us if we don't respond correctly to it. How we respond is the most important thing. Change is scary, though, for people. Change is tough. Uh, it's easier said than done. So how do you take that first step in making a change, especially in this case where it's a change that nobody wanted to make, and yet you got to do it? Well, this change, again, is something no one wanted, and a lot of changes are. And the, the most important thing is attitude. And I shared the story uh, in Conquering Life's course of Dr. Viktor Frankl, and he wrote a book, Man's Search for Meaning, because he survived the concentration camps in Nazi Germany. And one of the things he discovered was man's last freedom was to choose how they responded to any circumstance that they were in. And what he found was that the people that survived the concentration camps generally had more positive attitudes than the people that had negative attitudes. And so to me, that was a great affirmation of how to respond to unwelcome opportunities. If you'd like to pick up any of Richard's books, they're all available now at headlinebooks.com and search for Richard Battle, B-A-T-T-L-E, just like it sounds, Richard Battle. And you can pick up any of Richard's books, including his latest, Conquering Life's Course. All right. Uh, the four-letter word that builds character, 
Now, I, I hate it when authors give everything away, <laughs> but in this case, I got to know what that four-letter word is. You've, you have piqued my curiosity. Well, there's a story there, and I'd ask Shaley to put the picture up of myself and my brother. Uh, I was at a personal development conference that was multi-days, and we were asked to, for the homework for the next session to write of the one lesson we learned from our first job. And when I went home that night, uh, I couldn't sleep because I was thinking of my first job when I was an 11 year old paper boy. And that's me screen left and my younger brother screen right. Okay. Uh, when my dad was transferred to Chicago and I had a paper route when I was 11 years old. And that night I thought of 14 lessons that I had learned as an 11 year old that I did not realize were life changing lessons for my whole life, not just for being a paper boy. And I wrote those down on one piece of paper and that happened to be at the time when I was doing interviews and promoting Surviving Grief by God's Grace. And then I wrote that book four years later. And the four letter word that Bill's character is work. And the book is about the lifelong benefits of a first job because work is a great privilege that we have. And there are life lessons learned that can help us through our lives if we'll just look for them. Let me ask you about that because there's a, there's a bit of a controversy that's happening right now in the midst of COVID-19 with these enormous, and I mean enormous, sudden unemployment figures. You know, some estimates, Richard, there are gonna be 30 million Americans out of work by the time we get to Memorial Day, maybe even more. And their unemployment compensation in many cases is more than they would have made had they hung in there uh, and, and kept working. And so the obvious question is, okay, should I stay home and collect unemployment and make more or go back to work and make less? And my goodness, if you do that, uh, risk your life, your health by doing it. So what say you to that question? Well, I, I think that it's a short-term situation. If you'll remember, we went through something similar in the 30s with a lot of unemployment. Uh, the government wasn't there to help people at that time as, as much as we're doing currently. And it'll be a test for the character of our country, whether we come out of this uh, as robustly and with the free enterprise system and go forward and grow, or if we become a more socialistic society and less value the work that's available for people as well. And I think that it's gonna be interesting to see the people that want more than a subsistent existence are going to aggressively go out and make their own success. And I think that falls back into the, the concept of change too. And listen, by no means is any of this easy. And I think you and I are in pretty fortunate positions where an awful lot of people aren't. But if, yes. uh, if, if you can't make a living in one way, uh, you gotta look for that other opportunity. And, and as uh, somebody very wise told me once a long time ago, you sort of literally and figuratively jam your foot in the door <laughs> until you can get in there. Um, I also have, have heard from an attorney buddy of mine, something that is always stuck in my mind, and that is that flexibility is the hallmark of a professional. And yes. Richard, you've certainly been very flexible in your entire life. Hey, I, I wanna take just a moment to talk about the picture of you and your son there on your left. And and you very touchingly wrote in, in your book about surviving grief about the loss of your son. Tell me about your little boy. Well, he was the first child with my family surname in 28 years, uh, first son. And so he was very special, not just to myself and my wife at that time, but to our whole connected family. And he never had a fever, never had a cold. And then all of a sudden, one morning when he was nine months old, he was gone. And so it was a very quick and unexpected loss and it really forced us to dig deep and try to figure out how do we go forward. And for a while, I didn't care if I lived or not. And then thankfully I had people that shared with me some of their experiences that helped me to look up and regain hope. And that's my hope that I can regain, or I can share my experiences to give people hope as well. 
Uh, I'm so sorry for your loss. And I'm sure even after all this time, you probably think about that little boy all the time, every day. Yes, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Um, one of the things that I learned in, in reading that book is uh, Surviving Grief by Richard Battle is the, the very different way that you and your wife handled grief. And, and certainly it could have caused a huge wedge in your relationship and with so many people suffering so much loss and so much uncertainty with, with COVID-19. I uh, wonder if you could talk about that just a little bit and, and how different people grieve in different ways and, and allowing them their own lane to do that rather than trying to force the way that, that you process it on someone else. Yes, and of course there's so much written about that in theory, but when you live it, it's a whole different experience. And the way that I grieved was to read, read the Bible, read any book I could read by people who lost children, looking for hope, looking for ways to help me uh, regain my life and go forward. Uh, the way my wife looked at that was she got into house projects, painting, redecorating, doing all kinds of activities. And that was the way that she grieved. And we both supported each other's grieving process, but then we also had to give each other space individually to go through different pieces of that as well. And it is very difficult because even if you're very close as a couple, I think that that type of situation will cause strains and stresses that you wouldn't have normally. And having that respect uh, to let people grieve differently and support that is very important. Our guest, Richard Battle, is the author of six books, including his latest, Conquering Life's Course. He's a much sought after speaker, business consultant based in Austin, Texas, and uh, is an expert on, on grief and overcoming tough times. And that's why we're talking with him today on Zoom into Books. You can find out more about him at richardbattle.com. That's richardbattle.com. Uh, and pick up his books, uh, and they'll be personally inscribed for you at headlinebooks.com and search Richard Battle. Hey, who's that cute little girl sitting beside you there? Well, and that's a story as well. I had a book signing at Barnes & Noble store for the four-letter word that builds character. This was back in 2006, and that's my daughter Elizabeth, who's now 21, and she was born 10 months after the passing of my son. And as you can imagine, she's been a very special uh, gift to us. And when I was, had that book signing, I, I gave a presentation and we were signing books for people that came. And all of a sudden, Elizabeth, Elizabeth's job was to open the book for me to the page to sign for the person in line. Sure. And she tugged my jacket and said, Daddy, am I supposed to sign the books? And I said, well, if somebody asked you to, and the next thing I knew, everyone in line was asking Elizabeth to sign the books also. That's great. And it was a eye-opening experience for her, but me also. And one of the chapters I wrote about in Conquering Life's Course is it's about more than the money. And the money of that book or any speaking or anything else isn't as important as if in that situation, that experience opened her mind to possibilities that nothing like it could have. And while she's not a writer at this time, her mind thinking about possibilities that she can do and accomplish is much greater than it would have been otherwise because of that experience. And I could not have paid enough money for that experience for her. What a great memory. And as you said, what a great lesson to take away. And um, I, I want to talk about the, the, the four letter word that builds character a little bit for someone who says, look, I, I can't find work. There is no next job for me here. You know, this, this, COVID-19 uh, pandemic has is, is ended my employment options. What would you say to that? Because there are folks that are in that world that are unable to make that shift for whatever reason. Well, and, and first thing is my heart goes out to those people uh, because it is a tough situation, but we've all gone through tough situations and I encourage them because they will get through it and hopefully it'll be in a better, better situation than they were. So the first thing I'd say is when I was a youngster and my dad would have me doing different things. And when I came to my wits end, I would look up at him and say, I can't do that. And he would always come back with can't never did anything. And he would <laughs> force me to persevere through the situation 
until I was able to achieve it because he didn't give me something that I couldn't do. He just needed to make sure that I persevered until I could do it. But a lesson I learned back in 2000 with the dot-com bust, I had a lot of friends that lost their jobs. And what I noticed was that they had planned to be in one organization for many years and they were unprepared for an unexpected loss of a job. And so it took them about a six month period of grieving before they were really able to think about what do I wanna do next? And so then I started thinking about what would I do if I lost my job tomorrow? And that's when I decided that I wanted to be a speaker, be a writer, do other things that if I lost my job, I would convert to that full time. And I would encourage people now they need to think about this right away, put the grief behind them because it's not going to help you figure out what you're going to do, go forward, become successful. But then I would always have in my mind, what if it happens again? What am I going to do? And be prepared because if you are, you're going to bounce back faster than if you're not. Words of wisdom from Richard Battle, our author guest today on Zoom into Books with our friends from Headline Books. Visit him at richardbattle.com. If you like an autographed or inscribed copy of one of Richard's books, you can always pick those up at headlinebooks.com and search for Richard Battle. Um, Richard, I have a, a friend who's a, a country musician, a country music musician, who actually had several top 10 hits, top five hits, and one hit number one back in the early 90s. His name is Lionel Cartwright. He was nominated for Best New Artist uh, back then along with uh, Clint Black and Garth Brooks. So he was in some pretty high cotton. Um, and then the hits just stopped coming. And I asked him about that. I said, you know, what do you do um, when, when something you've worked for your whole life uh, is taken away from you? And he said, well, look, I, I did go into a very dark place for a while. And then I thought about all the different skills that I had amassed uh, learning my craft to, to write songs in country music. And, and so long story short, Lionel Cartwright, has shifted all that, and, and he writes theme music for television shows, over 100 TV shows now, and he does that uh, from his home studio. So he's not traveling 250 days out of the year. He's not living on a bus and going to Denny's at 3 in the morning. He's been able to see his, you know, his kids grow up, and, and he was pretty uniquely suited when uh, we all had to shelter in place because his commute was down the hall to his home studio. Um, I think there, there could be some folks that you've run into in your life who have skills that, that maybe they never even thought they had and they just require some exploration to peel back that onion. Any advice on how to, to really get a handle on what you can do and what's possible? Well, I think that's a great question and most of us can do more things than we think. And one of the things I've discovered coming out of the corporate world is it's very easy to be pigeonholed. Right. People will look at you based on how they know you and that's what they think you are. And they'll have a pretty limited box on their vision of what they think you can be. And most of the times we have to push that box away for people as we explore and expand and other items that we do. And it could be, it could be art, it could be music, uh, it could be taking care of kids or elderly people or becoming a farmer, who knows, uh, every person has individual gifts that if they'll think about them and think about their interests, they can find ways to employ those uh, for a more fulfilling life. I'm looking at some photos on the screen now during our Zoom into Book session here in the Zoom room with Richard Battle uh, of you receiving some awards. And, and I wonder if that little 11 year old boy from Chicago that we saw earlier in in the uh, presentation could have ever dreamed or imagined he would be an award-winning author or pick up any kind of award at all. Well, and, and thankfully I was only in Chicago two years, fifth and sixth grade. Ah. But uh, yes, the, the picture on the right from Unwelcome Opportunity at Reader Favorites, uh, which we're very grateful for. And the picture on the left, I was extremely fortunate uh, back in 1984 uh, this was in Montreal, Canada, when JC's International uh, presented me the Outstanding Local President in the World Award after uh, 600 people on our team had such a great year, and we were the outstanding chapter in the United States, and I was fortunate to be the head of that organization that year, and 
that helped propel the first book, which led to everything else. And so it was a monumental moment. Congratulations on all your success. And uh, it's funny you mentioned that about only being in Chicago for two years. I don't think that was as much a, a diss at Chicago as a sign of your love of Texas. You are a Texan yes. through and through. And uh, I wonder what lessons that you may have learned from from famous Texans about grit and stick to itiveness from folks like Sam Houston, who uh, uh, you know it, it had that in spades. Are there any lessons that that uh, you've taken away from other Texans that inform your worldview and and your positive outlook? Well, absolutely. And there, there's a great story of Sam Houston and his mother that connects to Texas winning their war for independence in 1836. And Sam Houston's mother gave him a ring and inside of it, she inscribed the word honor so that he would think every day about being an honorable person. And he was the leader of the Texas army during the revolution and the Con uh, Con Continental Congress or Constitutional Congress they approved the Texas Declaration of Independence on his birthday to honor him. And when the Alamo fell, Texas was not ready to fight Santa Ana and the Mexican army because they weren't strong enough. And so they ran east for six weeks in what's been called the runaway scrape. And they went from just east of San Antonio all the way over toward Houston. And many people in that group and it was men women and children wanted to turn and fight the mexican army and my belief is only the credibility of sam houston and people's respect for him enabled him to control that group until the right time when the texas army could win because that fight was the only one that texas won in the whole war but it was the one that counted we're in the middle of uh, the scrape of many of our lifetimes right now. And I think that what you have to say is going to resonate with an awful lot of folks. The latest book is Conquering Life's Course from Richard Battle. And as you see on the screen there, he's got a pretty optimistic attitude toward overcoming adversity. And he knows of what he speaks because he's been through an awful lot. You talked about uh, your battles with cancer. and You've had some pretty serious uh, health challenges that have taken you right to death's doorstep. An awful lot of folks right now are really, really ill, or if they're not personally ill, they know someone who is ill or worried about becoming ill from COVID-19. And uh, I wonder with, with that health background, if, if there's any uh, words of comfort you might impart on folks that are, are dealing with this right now, because there's a lot of uncertainty. Well, I think uh, first thing is I'm very grateful to be healthy right now. <laughs> and I've recovered, I feel very good, I'm healthy working out every day, and I'm grateful for that. And I think uh, an optimistic attitude is very important that way. And then I think your faith in what you believe in the future is important as well. Are you fearful of the future? Are you at peace with the future and where you think that will be for you? Uh, that attitude to me is very critical in how people can respond to whatever adversity that they're facing. And that can be big things or little things. You know, I, I look at you and I feel somewhat uh, underdressed and underprepared here. You know, you, you look sharp, you've gotten up, you've shaved, you've got a suit coat on. I'm a little lax on the shaving, I'm wearing <laughs> a, you know, a, a sweater. It's a little chilly here in, in the D.C. area today. Um, different people deal with things in different ways, but certainly I think one of the things that, that you espouse in your writing is having some sense of a routine, even whenever you're, you're thrown off your game a little bit. Um, we talked earlier about flexibility being the hallmark of a professional, so I think there's got to be a balancing act. So where do you find that? What's the balance between being flexible in a world that is changing and yet maintaining some sort of semblance of normalcy and routine? Well, and I think that's a great question. My 21-year-old daughter came home from college to finish the year up online. And, of course, she wants to know when this is going to be over. And yeah. her routine as a college athlete has been totally turned upside down. And so my counsel to her was be flexible. You're going to have to adapt. The teachers are adapting. The students have to adapt. None of us know exactly how all this is going to play out, so don't get hung up on any one thing. 
but then I suggested to her too, you're used to having a set schedule and being in a routine. And if you don't do that, then you're gonna end up wasting a lot of time. And when this is over with, you're gonna wonder what happened, like the group I mentioned earlier. And so I counseled her, find yourself a routine. Get into a normal routine, just like you did at school, and make sure you stay focused on it and you'll come out better than if you don't. And did she listen or did you say, yeah, yeah, dad, give me the car keys. That's, that's what I mean. <laughs> She listened, listened pretty well. I can't complain <laughs> about that. <laughs> hey, um, uh, interesting question for you that, that came in from one of our viewers. And that is in Texas, you've got big cities and small towns, and no towns. So how do you come back in Texas um, from this, this whole uh, quarantine shutdown? What's well, the right I, think, answer to that? I, I think that's a great question for a lot of areas of the country because it is different. And I think if you're in an area with less people, you can be more active. And I wish that the governmental entities would be separating by counties some of these different policies uh, to make it more flexible for people. So uh, in Austin, as of this broadcast, what's it like there when you, you venture out to go to the grocery store? What do you see around you? <laughs> well, it's interesting because I live about 20 miles west of the city, but I had to go in the southern part of the city yesterday, and we are coming off and into a different phase on Friday. But yesterday, I felt like it was the day after Thanksgiving shopping day when I drove into South Austin <laughs> because I could not believe the amount of traffic compared to what I've been seeing the last few weeks. Uh, and it's, so I think there's people in the Oklahoma Sooner vernacular that are jumping the gun on that order, if you will. Fair enough. Richard Battle, our guest today on Zoom into Books with Headline Books. All his books are available at headlinebooks.com and uh, look for Richard Battle there when you do your search. And Richard will inscribe those personally and uh, we'll get them out in the mail to you right away. Um, the book, uh, the most recent book is Conquering Life's Course. And, and Richard, I want to leave you with the last word. Uh, you're an expert on this. You've studied this for years on overcoming adversity and, uh, and spreading common sense in chaotic times. Last word is yours. What advice would you give to folks? Well, and I've had people say it can't get any worse. And it could get a lot worse than it is. Our parents and grandparents went through the pandemic of 1918. They went through the Depression. They went through World War II. Uh, I was a young boy during the Cuban Missile Crisis. They went through a lot of things. We stand on their shoulders. And it's time for us to return the favor and buck up and prepare our shoulders so future generations can stand on our shoulders. And so often when we're having a, an issue, and I had pity parties occasionally, and I found that when I did, I was focused on myself. And I found that when I focused on other people and how I could help them and encourage them that I didn't grieve for myself or worry about myself. And so to me, that's one of the greatest things we can do because there's always somebody worse off than we are and we can encourage people and help them get through this and it will in turn help us get through it. Indeed, Common Sense in Chaotic Times from my buddy Richard Battle. Uh, best-selling author and business consultant based in Austin, Texas. You can learn more about Richard at richardbattle.com and you can pick up an inscribed autographed copy of any of his books that you're interested in at headlinebooks.com and search for Richard Battle. That's Richard Battle, headlinebooks.com and Richard Battle. Richard, thank you so much for making time today. Stay safe and healthy down there and God bless Texas. Thank you, Burke, and we appreciate Headline Books and Zoom into Books as well. Thank you. You bet. For Kathy and Ashley and Shaley, the whole team behind the scenes that make these broadcasts possible, thank you so much. I'm Burke Allen with Allen Media Strategies in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Go out and make it a great day. Mm -hmm.